Uh, almost all the cave is, is limestone. But remember I said above us where you can't see it, there's a root of sandstone. There's also a little bit of shale uh, or shirt or flint in the cave in one of Back there's a seal and there was some flint. Uh, another question, what are you wondering about? How many have there been fatalities? Uh, how many fatalities? How many fatalities have there been in the cave? I'm going to count fatalities only back to 1816. Which is how long we've had George, right? Okay. Do you count ancient Native Americans who had mining accidents 3,000 years ago? There's probably a handful, less than 10 of those. Remember, some of the bodies that we found were not um, accident victims, but arrows. They died outside the cave and were brought in and buried. So let's skip all that. We'll skip about 10 ancient deaths. And about 30 or 40 million people coming to Man of Cave. Do we let people wander around here without a choice? Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> Do you think that makes the cave safer for visitors? Hmm. Yes. Yes. So in about 40 million visitors, we've had 20, 22 deaths in 198 years. Think about it, that's not bad. And almost all of them were pre-existing health problems like heart attacks, yeah. including two cave guys. About 40, 50 years ago, they were related to each other. Several years apart, they all died on a tour. How hard is that? Wow. Uh, what do I tell you when I first meet you? Health issues. You're currently the equivalent of a 31 story building down, a little turrets. What happens if somebody gets injured down here, God forbid? It gets carried out. It carried out and actually don't go back. When we get to this point, it is quicker and easier to go forward. We're more than, we're way more than halfway done. We've got a short time left on the tour. We're checking the watch. We'll be out of the cave pretty quick. What does that tell you? Going up and up. <laughs> this is the deepest point on our tour. We're 31 stories down, about 310 feet. It's right the now. deepest point on the uh, tour. 31 right stories here. down. There is natural airflow in the cave. Uh, it's a chimney effect. That entrance you felt, cold air blowing out, right? It's a nice cool day outside today, right? Maybe 75 degrees? When it's 95 degrees, that air at the entrance blasts out faster. It's a chimney effect. It's a natural airflow. In the winter, when it goes below 55 degrees, it starts blowing in that entrance. When it gets down to 20 or zero, it blows in really, really hard. This room in the winter actually feels cooler than this because we're very close to the Mammoth Dome that goes straight up 200 feet, where we have that big tower, remember? We're not gonna go up 200 feet of the tower, but it's a big room. And air can flow right in from the surface. Pretty close to where Mammoth Dome is, is where we came in, the historic entrance. Does it feel right here? I know we've been walking a while. Right here, you're sitting down for a moment. Does it feel slightly warmer yeah. than before? Yeah. And look at, don't look at the ceiling, look at my light beam. Maybe it's not easy to see, there's a uh, mist in the room. It looked, it looked weird when you came down here, right? Around the corner there? Down behind you, there are underground rivers. <coughs> there are hundreds of streams in the cave, by the way. And the rivers, actually, in some parts of the cave, come in from outside from the Green River. The Green River is in a big, deep valley, by the way, about a half mile over there. People canoeing on the Green River are actually 25 or 30 feet lower in elevation than where you're sitting. I didn't say below you, I said out there in the valley. You're in a hill. You're 310 feet below the hilltop. But outside, about a half mile over there, there's a river valley. And it was a hot summer, right? This last August, especially. This part of the cave is actually a little bit cooler than this, usually. And Fat Man's Misery, you felt nice wet rocks, and Fat Man's Misery wasn't that fun. That's usually drier. There's more humidity, and the air is slightly warmer and wetter right here because the rivers are warmer. Because water can come into the cave sometimes right from the Green River, it can back flood, in other words. Uh, in uh, a few months, this room will be a little cooler, a little bit drier than it is right now. Uh, there's probably some water driven, that's just condensation from the walls and the ceilings. But we're very close to where the rivers flow, down below. There are miles of tunnels back there. And by the way, when I say Mammoth Cave is 400 miles long, don't think of this like a road. It's not linear. Think of it like a bowl of spaghetti, hmm. or maybe even better, a block of Swiss cheese. Seven miles, seven miles. Mammoth Cave does not go to Highway 65. 
There are sinkholes that bring in water. Just like the sinkhole we came in, the sinkhole that was above the bottomless pit, if you look down the bottomless pit, yeah. there's water dripping there, the, the first pit anyway, right? Yeah. There's also water dripping in the bottomless pit. Water can leak in. Mammoth Cave looks like a big bowl of spaghetti about seven miles around for a big block of Swiss cheese. Water can drain a lot further. We have five major levels, a lot of complexity in a very small area. Guys, come on down. We're just taking a brief rest right here. I have time for one or two more questions, so we're going to move on. There are some bodies that are still in the cave, and you can say they're at rest, or you can say they're in storage. Yeah, they're, uh, some of them are intact, some of them are not totally intact anymore. And they're in undisclosed locations, it's a secret. But they're in, uh, the ones that are still in the cave are in pretty good shape. They're pretty much the way they were at. Uh, just a few, uh, few moments for questions here, and we're going to move on. Okay. How does water get in here? Has anybody got gripped on today? Yes. Well, it got in that way. It comes in vertically. It comes in through cracks and crevices in the rock. Who else has a question? With all the thousands of people walking on the pass, how come it's so bumpy in spots? Good question. Can I get your attention for a moment? Can I get your attention? Yeah. We are, by the way, down 310 feet, folks. We're as deep as we're going to be on this trip. You've noticed the trails are man-made, right? There's dirt and rocks busted up with, uh, the dirt was, uh, the rocks were busted up with sledgehammers by teenagers in the 1930s, the CCC boys. Civilian Conservation Corps made our trails. Then piled dirt on it from the underground riverbeds. But the trails were smooth in the 1930s. About 10 or 20 million people just in this part of the cave have come through since the 1930s. Those trails get bumpy because lots of people walk on them. It's like a road being, uh, uh, gravel roads get more bumpy when the trucks roll over. They don't get smoother. Except in some places where it's wet, where it's flat, sometimes it's not as bumpy. Uh, where there's a slight hill or a slope, it's bumpier. But they're not originally bumpy. That's a nice side effect of lots of people walking this cave. Do you remember Stephen Bishop? He's a cave guy. He's 17. He crosses the bottomless pit on a ladder or maybe a pole with a lantern. Where did he hold the lantern? Throw in his teeth. That hmm. misery, it's a natural stream bed. We didn't make that. We would have made it more, we would have made it better if we made it. It's a little stream, but it used to be full of sand and dirt, almost up to where your head was. Stephen Bishop came down here to River Hall. He could go down there or up here. Which way do you think he went? Down Both. But he went down there first. He found a river down there with eyeless cavefish, about the size of your finger, kids. No eyes, no pigments, no coloration. Wow. Crayfish, even uh, shrimp that have no eyes and no color. So in other words, a little ghostly animals, white or cream colored. Uh, you can sometimes see the blood pumping through the shrimp and the crayfish through their shells. There are miles of tunnels they found inside the rivers, but there's only one way in here. So there's only one way out. <laughs> Stephen Bishop also went up to where we're about to go. We're not gonna go down there, we're gonna go up to Mammoth Dome. He discovered that too, almost 200 feet tall. But then he had to climb all the way back the way he came. And by the way, Stephen Bishop was an African-American slave. He was a cave guy, but yet he was enslaved. Who knows how to get out of here? Especially back then. Stephen Bishop, the guy. Who knows if those rivers are going to flood when you get a wooden boat? The guides. Who has the uh, uh, lowest form of humor? The guides. The lowest form of humor in a day. Uh, you know, this is a limestone cave, right? Yeah. You shouldn't take it for granted. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. 